So hi everyone. Um, I think I've met most of y'all at this point, but just in case. Uh, my name is Julia Murphy and I am a student at the University of Chicago. Um, I'm here representing Team Viscous Flow, which is uh, comprised of myself and my teammate John. Um, I could not have completed this month without him or all the friends who supported us along the way, coming to our movie nights, DIY parties, and just listening to my crazy rants and <laughs> ideas. Um, so although this presentation reflects my personal journey um, this past month, they are all a part of it. So like many people here, um, I've considered myself to be an, entire, er, an environmentalist for most, if not all, of my life. Um, my parents raised me with a deep appreciation for the earth that I have continued to carry with me. Uh, we always had a garden. We composted, recycled, carpooled. Um, I loved participating in community events like beach cleanups or park cleanups. Um, I loved our lifestyle, but I longed to be more involved in the environmentalism movement. I thought that I was doing all I could and that even what I did didn't have a drastic impact on the environmental crisis at hand. I firmly believed that there were only two ways to truly tackle climate change. I could either enter politics and enact political changes that held businesses or corporations accountable, or I could enter a STEM field and find alternatives to the current technologies that are causing problems. I thought we were simply in a serious race against time. Could we develop new technologies fast enough to beat the impending doom of our planet? This was the mindset I had when I entered college. I majored in chemistry and was going to be able to tackle environmental problems, but not for about another 10 years after complete graduating, completing my PhD, maybe doing a postdoc, and then finally entering the workforce. Um, then, several years ago, I stumbled upon a little movie called Cowspiracy, which addresses the environmental issues associated with a traditional American diet, particularly one that is very meat and dairy centric. For the first time, I associated my personal actions with environmental destruction. Something as seemingly small as my diet could have huge implications. The more I learned about animal agriculture, the harder it became to make excuses for continuing to eat the way I did from an environmental or ethical perspective. I realized that I had to eat for others and quickly adopted a plant-based diet that grew into a vegan lifestyle. This lifestyle change was my first step on furthering my environmental journey, and it led me to look for more uh, resources that could help me go even further. And that's how PGC came into my life. I was astounded by how much more I could grow and how far I had to go to align myself or my actions with my environmentalist label. This journey has been extremely rewarding, while at times exhausting. Uh, it forced me to confront and question many of my actions. And I'd like to share some of the challenges that stand out to me the most. So the first is food waste. So during this challenge, I learned that the United States wastes about 30 to 40% of its total food supply. Considering that hundreds of millions of people don't have enough food, these numbers are staggering, horrifying, and quite frankly, disgusting. After looking at my habits, I realized that I was part of this problem. The way I viewed my food needed to change. So much of what I typically considered to be food waste was actually edible, and there was no need to throw it out. For example, potato peels, root vegetable greens, and broccoli stalks are all delicious, nutritious, and can be incorporated into wonderful dishes. I've started to look at my food more closely when I cook. Most of the times, the things that I used to get rid of are easily incorporated into my dishes. In the rare circumstance when this doesn't happen, the scraps go in the compost instead of the trash. To do this, I set up a composting station in my office. We collect food scraps throughout the week, and I deliver them to a local community garden compost pile. The amount of food that I've wasted and my uh, lab mates have wasted has drastically impact or decreased because of the things that I have learned during PGC. And the second challenge I would like to share with you is clean. Cleaning products were the area that I felt I struggled with most when it came to be being environmentally conscious. I was vaguely aware of these and other health and environmental problems associated with the products I was using, but wasn't sure what alternatives were available. This challenge gave me that last push I needed to make some important changes. Not only are there numerous safe, effective, and environmentally friendly products available, but I can also make my own cleaning products. It's often as simple as baking soda and vinegar. 
Uh, on the left, your left, is what my cleaning supplies lo stash looked like before PGC. And on the right is what it is now. It's not perfect. I still need to address my laundry detergent, but there are major improvements and it'll continue to get better. And these changes were super simple and they've made a huge difference. And the last challenge I'd like to share with you is fashion. So throughout high school and most of college, I was probably one of fast fashion's favorite people. <laughs> I was continuously buying new clothes, shoes, jewelry, even my bedding and decor changed constantly. The second trends changed, I was all over them. I never put any thought into what I was buying. It didn't matter that I was buying all this stuff as long as I donated it later, right? I could not have been more wrong. Although my shopping habits calmed down over the past few years, I was still not as conscious or selective in my choices as I should be. After watching the true cost, my eyes were opened to the horrors of the fast fashion industry. I was participating in a system that causes so much harm without even realizing or thinking about it. I also learned about the materials that my products were made from. It's conventional cotton, one of the most environmentally destructive crops. Synthetic dyes uh, that involve extensive treatment with harsh chemicals. Polyester, uh, made from non-renewable starting materials and one of the biggest sources of microplastic pollution in the oceans. My whole view of the fast fashion industry has changed, and it is a system that I do not want to be a part of. These challenges have changed my life and my worldview, but the most important thing that I learned along this journey was that my perspective on how to tackle the environmental problems we face was extremely limited. As I mentioned before, I thought there were two ways to take on climate change, become a politician or enter a STEM field. And while these are both important, they are not all that there is. I have met and learned about so many incredible people of all ages, education levels, and backgrounds who are making huge strides in tackling the environmental issues. And here are a few of them. Lila Copeland started the Earth Peace Foundation when she was 11 and is working to bring vegan dining options to Los Angeles schools. Vandana Shiva is fighting neocolonialism and GMOs in India. Richard Bumstead is working to make all landscaping at U Chicago organic and sustainable. Pat Brown is working to make animal agriculture obsolete. Nick Lyon, a university student, established urban beehives around U Chicago to help with campus biodiversity. And Stacy Brown works to reduce food waste in the U Chicago dining system. My biggest takeaway from this month is that every single person with whatever choice they make, is making a choice between a sustainable world or the path that we are currently on, and that every person with whatever talents or resources we have can tackle our environmental issues. The people I have met throughout this month and during these last few days have inspired me to continue to listen, learn, broaden my perspective, and to come up with more big, bold, bodacious ideas to <laughs> tackle environmental angles or environmental problems from all angles. Thank you.